In 2001, a man declared his love for his girlfriend by decorating a bridge with graffiti that stated, Claire Middleton, I love you. Will you marry me? Part of it has been done over the last five years. We were quite surprised when English Heritage actually agreed or almost encouraged that design. I mean, I'm, I'm so glad that after many, so many years of, of unused, virtually since the 2000, you know, I'm glad that some of it's been brought back to use. Uh, but it doesn't have the, uh, the, the traditional, well, they, they tend to use the word brutally, the Cabusier idea. I mean, if you look at, across there, you can see every third tier there is an open deck, and that was cri that was critical to the, the design. And, and like most flats that were just little more than a, a push chair wide, they're t at least ten feet wide. And things like milk floats and li little shop little shopkeepers used to come round with battery floats, and they they went up in the goods lifts, um, and then they just went along the decks. Although there was a shopping centre on the ground floor, pe people actually could just get their loaves of bread and their milk delivered to, to the doorstep. On Jason and Claire's one year anniversary, he took her out on a date to Roxy's Disco, which is now the R2. He proposed when he revealed a scrolled message across the bridge on Park Hill. Her response was a welcoming yes. I mean, obviously Park Hill in its history has had different phases. So the different phases in the 60s, it was the most glorious place to live. People report it as being a real positive thing and a real community and people were desperate to go and live up there. But of course, as lots of areas in industrial cities declined in the 80s, that's what happened to Park Hill too and that coincides with the decline of the steel industry. So Park Hill's a real social and political and cultural history of the city of Sheffield. Unfortunately, barely three months later, Claire broke off the engagement as social services suggested that Jason wasn't fit enough to be a father to her children. In 2011, a company called Urban Splash renovated some of the flats and decided to replace Jason's proposal to promote their investment. It became an icon. I love you, will you marry me? It could be found written in the same style on sale posters, cushions, in the flats themselves, a brand of beer, and even glass office doors. Urban Splash is obviously the company that's got involved in regenerating uh, Park Hill as an estate. So on one level, I think it's great that they're tying into something that's part of the building and the culture and the community. But on another level, they've anonymised it and they've made it very much about selling. But if Urban Splash hadn't come along, we'd have lost, I think by now, the whole lot would have been demolished. Urban Splash then added neon lights over the text showing the message to the whole city as a brightly lit, seemingly romantic message. However, for Claire's family, they are reminded every day that she sadly passed away at the age of 30. I know Claire's sister had issues with the graffiti full stop, especially after her sister has died in her early 30s. So for her, it's part of her life that she's constantly reminded of that's difficult for her. As for Jason, he unfortunately became homeless. Understandably, he asked Urban Splash for a flat, considering his work was hugely successful for promoting them. This was not provided to him. Instead, a now broken and desperate Jason was offered some of their brand of beer. This was also quickly withdrawn because of sales in the office that had run out. The rumourville that goes on around it I find fascinating. Some people, um, I've heard that Claire was a heroin addict and she died and therefore didn't. Um, answer or didn't get married to Jason in those respects. I've heard someone claim it was about them, even though their parents adamantly were, it's not you, it's a different Claire. Also the idea that Claire's name was put on it separately, but apparently according to Jason that's not true. Well, yes, I mean it was obviously required, unrequited of love. Um, so uh, Somebody was obviously proposing, possibly on Valentine's Day, I don't know, but it, it's become part of Sheffield folklore. Afterwards he was awkwardly wished good luck and sent on his way empty-handed and still armless. There is something about the idea that her sister's in the memorial in the city, but is it the way she wanted her to be remembered? What essentially started as a romantic and admirable story 
became a truly tragic and grim tale in the heart of Sheffield. Thank you.